Training Module 6.4 Climate Change. The objective of this module is to understand how aquacrop simulates the effect of climate change on crop production. First, we will discuss the expected changes in the climate. Subsequently, we will study the effect of elevated CO2 concentration on crop development and production. And finally, we will show you some simulations with aquacrop. So let's start with the expected changes in climate. First of all, we notice an increase of the atmospheric CO2 concentration by about two parts per million per year in the last decennia. This remains valid for the next 10 years. The elevated CO2 concentration has an effect on transpiration and on the biomass water productivity. Due to that higher CO2 concentration, air temperature is increasing. And as a consequence, also reference evapotranspiration will increase. Here we see a map of the IPCC plotting the temperature increase in various parts of the world. Next to air temperature, also the rainfall pattern is likely to alter. Rainfall might become less predictable and we can get more extreme events, more droughts, more floods. Display it is a map of the IPCC plotting the average annual precipitation change at different places in the world. Let's now study the effect of elevated CO2 concentration on crop development and production. This can be studied with the help of phase experiments, free atmospheric CO2 enrichment. It consists of placing a tube around the field and that tube blow CO2 over the field. As such, we get a CO2 enrichment. The crop development in that field is compared with the field next door where the same crop is grown on the same soil under the same climate. The only difference is the CO2 concentration. The first effect of that higher CO2 is on crop transpiration. Due to that higher CO2 concentration, we notice a certain closure of the stomata. As such, this will decrease transpiration. However, this possible water saving is likely to be negated by an increase in canopy temperature due to stomatal closure we have less transpiration and hence a higher temperature around the leaves, which means a lower relative humidity and as such a higher transpiration. Due to the higher CO2 concentration we might have bigger leaves with more stomata. As such, the reduction in transpiration due to that partial closing of the stomata might be partly undone by that increase in canopy temperature and in leaf area. So the combined effect results only in a rather small reduction of crop transpiration. Higher CO2 concentration strongly increase the biomass water productivity. So here the effect of elevated CO2 is very important. Let us now discuss how this is simulated in aquacrop. First thing to do is to select one or another emission scenario or a representative concentration pathway as the CO2 file. Several options are available and the scenarios and pathways differ because they assume different storylines. They differ in their assumption for population and economic growth, the introduction of new or more efficient technologies, 
economic structures and so on and so forth. That higher concentration is simulated in aqua crop by a small decrease of the transpiration and a strong increase of the water productivity. As such, the effect of the increase in CO2 concentration will result in a strong positive effect on biomass production. The adjustment of the biomass water productivity will be about 45% if the CO2 concentration becomes 550 parts per million. From phase experiment, it seems that that increase is only 25%. This might be due to restrictions in the phase experiment, like nitrogen applications and other effects. In aqua crop, by default, the increase will be 35%, because a sink strength of 50% is assumed. The user can adjust that sink strength, which might be different for different types of crop. Next to that positive effect of higher CO2 concentration, aquacrop will also simulate the effect of that increase in temperature, the increase in it denot, and the altered pattern of rainfall, which more likely will have a negative effect. So the combined effect of an increase of the production by CO2 and the decrease of the production as a result of altered weather conditions is simulated in aqua crop. So on the one hand, we have, due to the higher CO2 concentration, a reduction in transpiration, but an important increase of the biomass water productivity. The total effect might be an increase on the yield. On the other end, we have also the effect of the altered weather conditions, which are likely to result in water stress affecting the canopy development, the closing of stomata and altering the harvest index. So most likely the effect on weather conditions are negative. Aqua crop will simulate the combined effect. To study the effect of climate change, simulations need to be done not with one climate model, but with an ensemble of climate models. A climate model considers a set of processes which determine the future climatic change. Distinction is made between global circulation models and regional circulation models. There are several models and they differ since they consider different processes. Due to large uncertainties in those models, the predictions by each of these models differ. We have a wide range of predicted changes. And as such, simulations need to be done not with one model, but with an ensemble of climate change models. Here we see the relative change in the yield for maize as simulated for Malawi, and the result differs in function of the amount of fertilizers applied. Because the simulations were run with an ensemble of climate models, a range of relative change is indicated. These are the results for sorghum, also simulated with an ensemble of climate models.